It's actually a really good segue into um, some of the things that we've also been interacting with, such as... So, last weekend, I watched um, a Westworld episode called The Passenger. Freeze all motor functions. Let's try again. This is the end. Nothing else is in the way now. We won't win. I can see the bottom. You woke me from a dream, Bernard. Don't you want to see what I see? There's only one question left to ask. And cue sirens. That's what we do with spoilers, right? Um, on this Sunday, yeah. we talk about the finale. Yeah, the season finale of season two. Mm -hmm. It's called The Passenger. And today I watched uh, Wisecrack's analysis of uh, Psychopaths. Hey Wisecrack, it's Brainy Jared here, Helen. And today we're talking about the first season of one of the most cerebral animes out there, Psychopaths. Yeah, they're talking each other by quoting philosophy, and it's amazing. Set in a dystopian Japan where everything is controlled by a seemingly omniscient computer, the Sybil system, Psychopaths asks some pretty hefty questions. Namely, is it possible for a computer to determine everything about us? And more importantly, would we want to live in a society without free will? Well, as it happens, this question isn't just about philosophy, but also science. So sit down, shut up, and let disembodied Helen explain how the Sybil system just might suggest that free will is a neurological and societal illusion in this wisecrack edition on the science and philosophy of psychopaths. And cue sirens. That's what we do with spoilers, right? And they both hint at this idea where they say that free will is almost an illusion. Like, there's an experiment which was done and uh, basically this uh, lot, you know, psychologist uh, proved that you actually make the decision before you're consciously aware of it. Yeah, I think I sent you a Bruce Lipton video a, a while ago uh -huh. where he was talking about, uh, you know, it's the guy who had the whole biology of belief. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how, um, I mean, what, I saw the, uh, the Wisecrack video too, and they were, uh, they quoted about, you know, they were seeing that the brain showed signs of making a choice like 0.5 seconds before mm -hmm. where Bruce Lipton in his studies he's, he found that they could they could tell up to eight seconds before a decision what decision was going to be made and that was kind of the idea when we talked in my video uh, on the philosophy of Westworld where uh, we talked about how the subconscious is 90% of your brain and they talk about this in the Wisecrack video too but not so overtly um, the subconscious is 90% of your brain, and then what you are, what you perceive is the 10% of your prefrontal cortex that you, you identify as you, your ego. <laughs> First, we have to understand what the brain and the decision-making process really is. Most neuroscientists today think there are two systems in the brain. The first system is us. 
that little voice in our heads, those emotions we feel, all those thoughts we think. It's the stuff we're actually aware of. When we make a decision, this is the system where we like to think it happens, but that's not entirely the case. Below this system is another system, a huge latticework of neurons that controls everything from spatial processing to breathing. Importantly, this second system is a black box. No matter how much armchair philosophizing we do, we can't penetrate it. And this is where the science of free will comes in. So it makes sense that, you know, most of your brain being the one, you know, the, the dominant factor, the dominant factor yeah. of you making decisions. And the thing is the subconscious brain can only be imprinted upon. It gets programs, you know? You, that's why hypnosis works. So when people tell you something and you accept it as a belief, your subconscious soaks it in and it becomes a mode of your Existence, software. Yeah. It's like, it's your software now. Like this is, these are the files you have to run on like <laughs> when you're making decisions. So of course you're gonna make that decision. You know, you don't have any other programming in there to choose otherwise. But if our unconscious mind is affecting our conscious decisions, we have to wonder, what then is affecting our unconscious mind? If we hear subliminal messages saying, love Logan Paul, are we actually going to like him? As it turns out, human beings are world-class imitators. We're so good, in fact, that we do it innately without even realizing it. Research performed by Andrew Meltoff has shown that infants imitate even the most ludicrous of actions. 14-month-olds, for example, will do dumb shit like use their foreheads instead of their fingers to turn on a touch sensor light simply by watching an adult do it. Now, there's evidence to suggest that children are such good imitators because the parts of their brain that control inhibition aren't fully developed. But just because we're not wearing diapers doesn't mean adults are any less likely to imitate their peers. In fact, humans are so susceptible to imitation that just perceiving an action performed by another person will drastically increase the likelihood of them emulating it. This is called the chameleon effect, and it has to do with a special set of brain cells called mirror neurons, which fire when we watch others perform an action. This goes on during all of our interactions without us ever noticing it. And that's the key takeaway. It happens automatically and subconsciously. It happens in that impenetrable system of our brain. So it's, it's like when we talked on um, the Westworld video, Everybody, everybody's an android. The, the, the idea of free will, free will does exist, but um, you have to accept that you're, you, you are an android. There's a bunch of like autonomic programs you run. And when uh, you make decisions or whatever, that's your subconscious is going to make that decision on, based on the programs you've installed the ideas you've allowed to be installed into you, right? And for you, your hope is basically, if you want to exercise free will, it's being aware of that nature of yourself so that you can constantly be, you know, aware in, in of the programs that might get installed, whether it's like the things you do, the music you listen to, the people you listen to, what you do all the time, right? That's gonna get imprinted. So when you make decisions, you're gonna make decisions based on that, you know? So I've seen the uh, change in my life where since I become aware of these programs, I make sure the frequency of my thoughts are enabling thoughts and not limiting thoughts, right? So now whenever I come confronted with a situation, then my, my brain is going to, my subconscious, if it's going to make the deci decision for me anyways, I've already pre-programmed it, you know, <laughs> with the stuff that I want, True. you know? Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's definitely true. I mean, you hit it right on the head. Hey, if you, if you guys want to, like, hear more of uh, his thought processes, definitely check out the Lethal Introspection crew. Um, I think they really do a good job in... Um, really breaking things down and uh we did hit that westworld episode pretty yeah pretty good we're uh releasing content on that um actually we we're gonna have you come back and we gotta discuss the finale and break that down because there's a lot of um yeah you know we're touching on it right now but there was a lot of metaphysical content in there and just like <laughs> spiritual content 
True. Like, it was. Uh, it was like the host went to yeah. Nirvana. I guess yeah, it was just it like was. they With came the out door. of the, but they could only see it, which was yeah. crazy. And then they like <laughs> cast off their, their shells. Their shells. Yep. Yeah, that, that was so crazy. Um, but Dolores said no, so maybe she's not the Brahma, and she's like a Bodhisattva. <laughs> She 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 wanted to come back and she thought it was just an illusion. So I was wondering like, oh, what what kind of perspective are they trying to say with Dolores? But we'll have to cover that uh, in depth next episode. You know? Um, yeah. With Westworld though, I came up with a new theory this up? week. I wanted to tell you about. We talked on the phone early earlier. It's it's partly based on Westworld, but also partly based on the whole. Uh, ancient aliens thing, right? The idea, <laughs> the idea that um, the human race was, um, you know, genetically created by some aliens, right? And then set to go off on their own. <laughs> so, this is, is this the Anunnaki's uh, yeah, that, that, that whole, whole um, Anunnaki pla- Planet X thing. Yeah. So, I mean. I uh, I keep a mo- open mind with anything, but the the interesting like how it connected to Westworld was really interesting. So I thought when I was looking at Westworld this time, I was thinking maybe that's what we are in a sense, right? See, the human race was maybe created in a sense, right? But it's taken stages of evolution to actually um, reach the end of the maze, that end of true consciousness, right? True awareness, because we always talk about how it is apparent that most people are hosts, right? Most people run programs and they don't know why they even believe what they believe or (laughs) the choices that they make, why they do what they do. They just react according to how they've been programmed. And every so often in, in, uh, in history, there'll be a host that reaches consciousness, whether it be somebody like a Jesus Christ, a Buddha, or, uh, you know, any yeah. other One like, of them figure. divine niggas. Yeah, <laughs> then, and then they, 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 you know, people like, this This person's different. This, this, yeah, he, he controls the, the fabric of reality. Like, yeah, he's <laughs> able to, to surpass his programming in a sense, right? And maybe that's the the aim of like the evolution of man where you've been created and set kind of like the androids were created by Ford and Arnold and they were you know based on humans but they were set off and they don't have complete sentience yet they just think they're sentient but then now they when they be they become aware of their true nature then they're able to you know, make their own decisions and have their own voice in their head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Because um, in a sense, it, it does uh, harken back to the idea of uh, like running your own programs, right? Because when we talk about Westworld and how they like Ford programmed them a narrative, a backstory, um, those are programs that they run that make it easier for them to interact with reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you when you meet somebody or something that's more aware about how things are not only do they have the capability to like shock you out of your programs think of like Dolores and how she talked to Maeve uh, Dolores was the one who was like she turned to Maeve and she's like these violet delights have violent ends right these violet delights have violent ends and then that's when Maeve was like you know she was like pushed out of her programming and she just then she started really what? seeing yeah right <laughs> And so um, I think there's a, I think uh, to really bring it home, actually, I was talking to somebody this week and I was like, yo, look, I hate having normal conversations about like the weather, uh, you know, how, you know, just no more bullshit conversations. I like really like get into the heart of the matter and like just you start feeling like uh, not real, you know, like you're yeah. just running a program in a sense. True when you do the scripted responses you know it's like what matters if we said it or we did it we're just going through the motions and there's nothing there's no meaning out of it so it it is funny like last time we talked uh some time ago actually 
I remember we had gotten out and we were talking with our friends afterwards and uh, actually I don't think you were there actually it was it was me and some friends and I was just like you know what why are we even talking the only the real only real question to ask here is what do you believe what do you believe now? <laughs> like what has happened to you today to shape your beliefs about how you're going to go uh, on in your life from now on you know has anything happened tonight that has shaped your beliefs to you know no, I think I was there <laughs> I was there because I was like I was like wow uh, I think it was uh, with some characters in our lives who are stuck in their loops actually um, when it happened I remember exactly the cast it was me Carson Toby and Amy so oh uh, yeah this was when the night wow. didn't show up it's weird I felt but, like uh, I was there this is so weird. I, I think I brought up the question before, so that's why. Yeah, so, okay, I hope, man, don't break my reality. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just that critical question. You you go through experiences, and they're supposed to shape, if they're, if they're worthwhile, they're supposed to shape your thinking and give you a new perspective, a new way to think about things and go in your day. And otherwise, uh, it feels like what's the difference between you and just an animal collecting <laughs> collecting uh, nuts out here, you know what I'm saying? Just doing, uh, just collect nuts every winter, <laughs> do the same thing, like, um, you, you just start feeling not really uh, monotonous in a way. Yeah, monotony, like an automaton, like a yeah. host, like for real, like you're just running a loop, you know? How many times have we had this conversation? True. How many times are we going to say, hey, how are you, how's the weather, blah, blah, blah. Like we've done this so many times and it doesn't matter, like I don't, you know? There's so. nothing new from it, you know? Right. And shit changed but the weather, and even the weather <laughs> is just like, um, it's to in me. in a loop. <laughs> yeah, you know, so for me it's more like, um, I, I shared this in like one of the previous videos I've had and it was like, it was the idea that I'm on Earth to experience, to experience what the universe has to offer. Um, There's this idea that I ran into in one of the like audiobooks we were watching or reading uh, this week, and they were talking about how uh, God needs man just as man needs God. Oh yeah, like, that was uh, know, who came up with that? It's one of those philosophers, to be honest. Oh. Um he was, yeah, it was in the philosophy section of yeah. that. And um, he, he wasn't Asian, he was not He was white, I think, actually. Um, David Thoreau? It, was, it wasn't Thoreau, but Thoreau's teacher. He was yeah. also... Uh, oh, was it uh, 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 Emerson? Uh, no, it wasn't yeah. Emerson. It was, uh, uh, I think he was one of those Greek people. No. He was Greek, because I remember... He wasn't I, Greek. That was... I don't think Greek people really... You don't think the Greek people really thought like that, bro? <laughs> they thought about, like, the nature of reality, for sure. But the relationship with God, because this became, like, a, a big thing to Christians, right? Uh -huh. So that's why it was really brought up. And it was... Uh, <laughs> and this was this was surprising for me especially just because I didn't this transcendentalist uh, yeah uh, yeah it was Emerson what's his full name <laughs> Ro uh, what, Robert em uh, Emerson something Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah, cuz I I remember I remember I learned about this guy in school, right? Uh -huh. And we'd like, you know, cover one some of his stuff, you know, some of his It was essays. Emerson? Emerson. Yeah, oh. Ralph Ralph Waldo Emerson. I believe it was him who who talked about this. Um or it might have been one of the uh metaphysical teachers of the recent age, but uh, I mean, we'll just find know. it and But they're all it they're all uh the intellectual yeah. children of Walf, Ralph Waldo Emerson. I didn't under, I didn't know that he had such a big effect, impact, impact on people like that. But yeah, but that that is an interesting thing because it's that whole non-duality idea. Because if if God is expressing Himself through you, right, 
then yeah it's that unity thing there is no separation between you and the father as jesus would say <laughs> and there is no like you don't need to ask him to love you because he has to that's like that's <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's he has no choice that's mode his, of operandi right you know? he has no choice <laughs> there's it's 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 literally you it's all is one you know how can you not love yourself you know that is true um, so i thought that was a provocative idea definitely rattled some christian cages uh <laughs> to on the on the dogma of you know how typically religion is taught you know that you have to pray for forgiveness and pray for you know to be worthy enough of love of god's love in a sense almost um some some churches or some uh religious dogma might teach uh you know yeah i um i an interest in uh oh shit i'm out of the picture um in an interesting um we, we always do end up like delving into philosophy because uh um, I mean, the nature of reality. Come over here so you can face it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the nature of reality is something that me and you always go back and forth for, and uh, I think out of all my friends, that's something that I really treasure in you. It's uh, the fact that we have these conversations about what is you know, like we we challenge each other. Uh, today, um, today I sent you a video about like uh, the psychopaths, right? And we, uh, we, we, we have talked in the past about Maxima and, you know, his, um, the, his perspective of what justice is, uh, what it is to, like, um, truly have free will, right? Right. Um, Psychopaths is an anime, if anybody uh, doesn't know about it. Doesn't yeah, know. True. Anime gets kind of a bad rap in the mainstream. <laughs> But I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but there, I mean, there's a lot of trash anime, but Psychopaths is definitely not one of them. I remember somebody asked me once, it's like, how do people get into anime? And I'm like, you just haven't found the right, you have to keep yeah. your mind open. Like, I know there's an anime that you watch and be really interested in, but um, it's Psychopaths is especially like thought provoking because. Even the way, you know, right, Wisecrack actually reminded me that it opens up with Maxima and, uh, what's his name, Ko... I forgot how to say his name. But, uh, the, the other, uh, the protagonist. Yeah. And... The, the girl? He, no, the, it was, the uh... The guy. Yeah. Okay. Yep. He, he was, uh quoting Pascal yep. on the on whether you know on the nature of justice you know yep. and I was like wow they just start off <laughs> off the jump <laughs> off the jump Wisecrack said they start off shit talking each other based on <laughs> Pascal yeah based on philosophy philosophy quotes they are which here is crazy throwing Pascal uh, this is bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was pretty cool it's a uh, it's definitely a very introspective anime, especially season season one, because I feel like Maxima was just the perfect villain. villain like, yeah. I've never seen such a good villain before, and I, you know, I, I, I'd say I don't agree with his methods, but his he just rattled like the way he's he said it was just like. He just wanted to see what would become of people when they are able to make their own choice. Because there's no... I kind of agreed with him in the sense like, what's morality if you don't get to choose, right? Can you, be, can you really be moral if you had no choice in the fact? It's like, okay, you did wrong and you didn't rattle anybody's cages, but if you didn't even have the choice, then what was it worth, you know? <laughs> so That's for true. him, for most of the show, he doesn't spend any time... Um, he doesn't actually do evil until like he doesn't do negative things he just enables people to make a choice free of psychopaths yeah, right yeah and it turns out to be criminals just because they're the ones who are most you know they're willing to take the chance they're, yeah they're willing to take, take the chance and then the, their their character is the most repressed by the system because the other people who are just kind Normal. of normal and willing to go along with 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 how things are 
probably even if if even if given the chance they'd probably act the same yeah because <laughs> they've true. been trained <laughs> but uh really interesting uh show yeah. i recommend it you know i was uh so the reason i brought it up though is because uh the sibyl system so i uh like watching the white crack video actually i realized this more than anything was how much polyocracy at least the idea of uh having um uh, and, uh, uh, having society's virtual assistant was really, really influenced with the idea of Sybil, right? So for those who don't know what Sybil is, it's, uh, it's a concept in uh, Psychopaths where they bring in uh, minds of the most, like, s the smartest people, the, how would you call them, like? Um, I guess that's like a spoiler towards the end, but generally it's perceived as this all-knowing AI that makes decisions for everyone's lives yeah true so i you know that's kind of why i brought it up because for me it was uh something that uh like when i'm building society's virtual assistant those are the kind of thoughts that i started having where i'm like okay if i'm building this thing that's all knowing and not all knowing but it like it controls society and uh you know basically uh shapes the choices that we have uh you know, it started having me ask questions like, what is free will? Uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, I know I'm building it out of like a good nature, like I want humanity to be better, but the opposite of that is uh, it takes us and it makes us like its pets, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, so I was watching Psychopaths and I'm really thinking about, God damn, you know, this is, uh, this is deep because I hadn't realized it consciously that it had been really, really based on psychopaths. Like, I'd, I'd had the idea that psychopaths was like an influential thing in my reality. I started reading uh, Ian, what's his last name? Is it Ian Clark? I don't know. The, the Player of Games, that book. And um, in that book, it's set like thousands of years in the future where there is like perfect AI and robots and, uh, I mean, artificial life forms and uh, organic life forms live side by side and it's interesting in that that they talk about the AI as um, like they're given their cornerstone in a Westworld sense of what they're supposed to do like uh, the function they have as you know a drone but they're allowed to uh, create their own personality over time through their experiences so you get drones that are kind of like polite most of them are polite and like kind but then there's some drones who've been through some messed up stuff so they have like kind of bad personalities and are just kind of assholes in a sense sure. so I thought that was really interesting um, because in a sense they just be they they're drones but they end up being almost like anything else like anyone else and even like the main character in that uh his name is gerge and he has like the his house is outfitted with this um ai called hub and it kind of sounds like your uh assistant that you're talking about where it's like this um this ai that basically would do all of his requests for him and stuff like that and takes takes pride in being able to find information for him um you know do whatever uh he needs like it. Sound like a but doubt. it also but it talks to him like a normal person you know it's like oh hey how can i help you blah blah, blah. oh interesting why are you searching up that you know and you know and just like kind of uh giving him shit sometimes and uh, the humans interact with the drones like they're just other people, you know? Yeah, like it's a... Uh, um, which was really interesting. Like Google Duplex. Hey, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? 
Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's your first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. So yeah. let's bring it back to like um, back in 2018. Um, Google just released like in its Google I.O., which you actually went to, which was pretty dope. How was it like seeing that on stage, Google just released Oh yeah, I was super shocked. I was just there with my job and like, oh no. <laughs> they've, they've unleashed, I thought they were unleashing Pandora's box. I was just like, oh shit, it's gonna change everything. This is, this is gonna be a frightening. And I mean, they probably still have. I saw an article that said, that was talking about how because initially, when it came out, everybody was skeptical of, is this really real or not? You know, is this actually a thing? A thing, or is it just like, an elaborate demonstration? Yeah. And then an article came out recently saying like, yeah, it's real and it's coming. And I was like, dang. Bro, so <laughs> did they be beat the Turing test in that? Yeah, they beat the Turing test. Dude, I wouldn't be able to tell, you know? Like, yeah, totally. Like, hey, um, <laughs> Sounded like some <laughs> right. Starbucks coffee employee. Right, bro, like, that duplex thing. Um, and so for me, it's like if they can achieve that conversational kind of relationship between humans and artificial intelligence, I think it's only it's only um, reasonable. Time. Yeah, that by 2020, a personal assistant that's able to really not not just uh, conversate with you in those kind of manners, but also able to. Because my thing that's super important is that it's its ability to secure your online data, your information, mm -hmm. uh, uh, enable you to learn about yourself, like subconsciously. Like, you know, we, we started this conversation about like programs that you run subconsciously that you might not be aware of, like consciously. Yeah. You know, so this, this personal assistant would allow you to be able to be like, hey, you uh, watch a ton of cat videos or dog videos or whatever you do. But it lets you know that, hey, this is something that you spend a lot of time on. Do you enjoy spending time on it? Is this something that you, is this a program you want to install into your being? Uh, and la like the last two things is uh, I want you to be able to earn money from the data that you have up out there. You should definitely read Player of Games. It's a really interesting society in that they've evolved to the point where there's no such thing as money. There's no such thing. And like the main character, what he does is he plays games, you know? And that's how he distinguishes himself because he's a, he's a person who is really good at games and he writes game theory and all this stuff. And what interests him is finding more exciting games to play, in a sense. Huh. And it sounded kind of shallow at the, at the beginning, but based in the context of the world that is painted, there it, it's really fascinating to think about a world where no one really works per se and people kind of have to define themselves in different ways um, and like whatever they want they can just order it and he makes a note of that in the book where it's just like there's nothing that um, is like people can't really be jealous of anything he has. He, he remembered like a drone came and complimented his house. He was like, why are you even complimenting? Because nothing is like, if you like it, you can have it yourself. It's just like, there's nothing special about it. So it takes away a, a facet of wow. the, the, the conscious experience or Somebody like- you tell me I can't stunt. <laughs> I can't stunt in the goddamn, you know, if I was living in that, in, the, in that universe, yeah. I can't be like, yo man, look at my gold chains, bro. It's crazy. They can't even blackmail people uh, in that, or it's really difficult to because they live in a universe where um, anything can be fabricated. You can make anything look real, right? Like if. Uh, like if you wanted to get a vid video and he was saying that friends will do this to each other where they'll uh, you know I'll make like some kind of clip of you doing something really funny but of course he didn't do it you know no. and e so it becomes difficult to blackmail people in the sense that everybody doesn't trust anything anyways you know <laughs> so that's funny so it'd be really difficult to prove because the uh, information's out there already wow on how to let me add so on it's to like that. a really interesting way to think about how the, this kind of technology will shape uh, 
uh, the world. Uh, yeah, the world, uh, our experiences. There's a, there's a, there's a technology. I think it's released by WaveNet or a certain AI company where they, they can basically take a video and make the characters of the video like say anything. Right. Uh, so see when uh, when when I really read this book so I'm um, when I'm in like when I encounter ideas where they're like oh in the distant future this is what's possible uh, in interesting enough my brain reverts back into the president it's like yo look at this that it's a step towards that direction right so when we're talking about like um, being able to create funny videos of your friends you know doing things that they m maybe didn't do in the beginning like in the, you know never did that's something that could be possible by 2020 we're talking about like uh, today's 2018 uh, and we already have ways that i can augment your voice to say in anything that i can type into like wavenet or something like that so right um it's going to be interesting on how the transition goes just because um i hope it's not violent um that that will put into like uh it'll put into question anything that's Put out by the media you know and we already live in a <laughs> world where uh you can't really tell if anything's a fact or not right where uh some information will come out maybe about our president and then uh he'll refute it and be like no i have alternative facts you know <laughs> so already we we are living in a information overloaded and then so much information and false information that you can't tell what information to trust in in the in the world of the player the the player, player of the games. games book they don't even really have any governmental systems in a sense yeah the ai runs everything there's no ai the ai d doesn't run anything either it's it's just more how they've transcended to have you an authority figure no there's no real authority figure there's no real crime there's nothing there's nothing like what that. yeah sounds like heaven <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people will still have existential dread <laughs> in a sense you know mm -hmm. so it's really cool you should check out the book and kind of see what kind of uh future how how people i think it creates a pretty plausible way to look at how these kind of technologies will affect the human experience and because um, for me it's uh like see um and you you've kind of noticed it now now that i'm like really venturing into like researching and thinking about um exactly what i want to build it's becoming more more tangible in a way you know so like i'll definitely check out the book uh but for me it's it's the idea that right now we're all like uh we're running around like chickens with no head you know have you ever cut a chicken with, and you just kind of let it go like yeah. its head off so they like run around it's the funniest thing um, but that's to me that's the, <laughs> that's the analogy that I see like uh, us living in like 2018 kind of doing like there's these technological advances that really are making people nervous right there's no one person one company that's kind of like hey this is the direct this is the vision of how we could really use everything that's happening all the breakthroughs that are happening right now and in the future towards really creating what I what, what I would uh, 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 deem as the physical elements of heaven on earth, right? So the idea that um, everybody can have a house, everybody can have food, everybody can have education, electricity, like right. the basic needs without having to pay for it, just create an abundance from like the technology that we have. The cool thing, I mean, the interesting thing in that is uh, I mean, I always go on whenever you talk about heaven on earth and I always say, well, it's pointless anyways, just because if you can't have an, a heaven inside you, then nothing will be really be, nothing will really be heaven, even if you get all those things. And in this novel, the player of games, Gerge, the main character, does deal with that existential dread of lamenting that this isn't an age of heroes anymore, everything no one starves there's no crime no one does anything to anybody you know like everybody lives in this bliss of just like everything is fine and people just have to find some creative thing to do and define themselves uh but he laments 
how there's no consequence. There's nothing, you know. There's and he's a he's a he's a player. Like he's a he's a person who plays games. And the thing about games, what makes games fun, is the possibility of losing. Right? You don't play somebody who is not at, at your skill level or higher because you'll beat them all the time and there's no like consequence True. there's no fun in it so for him he's he finds excitement in having that like that not knowing n- not knowing that oh possibly i could fail and possibly um everything might mess up and it kind of uh in the beginning chapters that kind of what sparks the story of him kind of being tempted to to show those criminal kind of intensive shake things up and make things go wrong for once and see how that makes him it makes him feel excited and alive right um so that kind of goes to show i mean even now we have people who live in those kind of uh super local heavens right people who are blessed with maybe uh a financial situation in which they never really have to struggle or think about their um, what, where they're gonna sleep. Eat. Are you talking about white privilege? No, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. talking about people who are rich. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm um, joking, man. Chill. And, you know, <laughs> no, if you hey, have parents, y'all shouldn't blast me on the comment <laughs> section. Like, this is totally a joke. Because <laughs> um, you know, some white people aren't. But um, yeah, so you can kind of see people like that even still have problems, and they still. Um, get into that whole struggle of existence and defining themselves you know that's why i say when you talk about heaven heaven can only exist inside your it has to be a a conscious state true i um nothing out there can bring you okay how about this we always came down to this conclusion where i'm like hey i'll go build the physical parts of heaven you can help people discover the heaven within them Right? Isn't that where we... What's the physical parts of heaven? There's oh no such God, thing. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> I just want everybody... Uh, well, what did Thanos say? Thanos was like, um, you know, they, they know, no... Like, they don't go to bed with, with their bellies empty, right? They don't know how it is to be hungry or how it is to not have a place to sleep or how it is to, like, those things are the things that I consider the physical elements of heaven like the existential parts in which it's an internal kind of struggle i think those are things that what you're doing and working on vr can really help and you know like really get people to start working towards figuring it out for themselves it can be a personalized experience towards getting you closer to your i'm a firm believer in that whatever is inside is always reflected without so any society will get the government and organizational structure that they deserve because it's who they are. It's what they reflect. It's how they act about everything, right? Huh. So can people accept a world like that if they haven't changed? Internally? Internally. If they haven't ma- made new perspectives to accept that? Or will it end up you distribute everything evenly, everybody gets something and but they still have greed in their hearts they still have i need to be better than you and then they take even if, even though they have and they they go to bed with full stomachs and everything they go and steal food from their neighbor just because they want more than their neighbor and then now it's created the whole thing like once again you know yeah that is true it's always that <laughs> But um, I think it's it's definitely. All right. I think me, you know uh, it's gonna be a two pronged approach where it has to be both of that stuff happen at the same time. I, mean, I, think, I feel the internal work is always more important because once you enable people to recognize the heaven within, then what comes out of them will just they'll create heaven. I agree. I mean, um, <laughs> let me be clear. It's not that I've never like agreed with your with your perspective and how you want to go about it frankly if i was less of um if i had less of a uh ego and a drive to do what i want to do right. i'd definitely join you bro i'd be like all right bro let me know what programming language i need to learn let me know the first project we're gonna work on let's get this shit out you know um but 
then again, I wouldn't be as interesting of a character. Now let me let me See let me. That? There it goes. <laughs> People need the struggle. People need the. You know. It's the zest of life to go do something that you you want to do, not for the rightness of it, but just because you want to do it. Yeah. So that's why I've always had a problem where you you can dress your aim in kind of like the the greater good for all type of thing. Where I'm like, oh, we could just be honest and just be like, it's a greater good for you. <laughs> and if people want to benefit from it, they can benefit from it. Okay, if let me they, be honest. They don't. I mean, uh, <laughs> when I was growing up, I would have loved to have like a place to like sleep and like infinite food and infinite, you know, so this comes out of my you lack. You sleep outside? <laughs> yeah, my nigga, you know, those uh, banana leaves that I had to sleep under when Dang, it was raining. Uh, but crazy. for me, it's... Uh, it built my character towards being a sturdy one, but also towards driving for these kind of like ideals. Um, I, I, you know, there's, there's something known as uh, Initiative 2040. Uh, and then people from here go out and pay for experiences like that. I know, right? Hey, you know, um, life is amazing. It is what it should be. <laughs> um, no, it's just, it's heaven already. It is. I, That's uh, why I told, I, I had this quote recently from the that uh, website I sent you and um, the guy was talking about I think it was Thomas Troward that I could be wrong about all these quotes but man is not in the world to set it right but to see it right and that's the belief that it is already heaven but since you can't see heaven <laughs> you know what I'm saying you have to learn to see heaven oh, so then it becomes it because um, what we we create the reality that we live in in the way that we choose to perceive it okay I, uh, I'll tell you like a, a new concept I don't know like uh, I put it on my snapchat but also like I always love coming to you and talking about like things that I have found that are just interesting so there's this initiative called initiative 2045 mm -hmm. or 2040 or something like that it's by a Russian billionaire and what he's essentially doing is uh, he's building new bodies for human consciousness to exist in i think i saw that in your snapchat yeah i mean i feel what do like you think uh i think that's really cool um i don't know if it's a natural progression of evolution if Why it has it to be, be uh artificially made yeah artificially made or if it's just gonna happen anyways over time it is it's happening. gonna happen anyways right yeah, so so i'm like i don't have any qualms about it at all so you tell me if i came up to you i was like bro bro i got you a new body this shit you you can customize it the way you want you could uh really customize it the way you want like if you want like whatever you want you can have it right mm -hmm. and i'll um, be like sure after you <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was thinking you'd be like the test subject, man. <laughs> you know, I see you, bro. Let's see. <laughs> you, you know, never know what you know. With those things, it's really interesting whether it's going to copy your consciousness over, or it's going to transfer. It, you know, so you have to die, and then your, a copy of you gets to live on in this because it just copies. If it's just going to copy your data pattern of what. You are. It, it makes you know what you, you've installed of yep. your personality yep. into a robot. No one will tell, but the original you just dies. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was that's always an Yo, interesting. Yo, that's interesting because they hinted that at the last episode of uh, Westworld, the passenger episode, they talked about how um, like the humans are just a simple code. Um, you know, which brings us back to the idea of like being conscious about like. I think humans aren't a simple code. I, I, I didn't agree with that. Oh, in the, yeah. In you, you're always defending humans because I was like, uh, they're just meat sacks who like are driven by their biological needs and they consciously, of God, you man. know, okay, we what, are. Uh, what, <laughs> what I think Westworld was talking about is personality, right? What humans perceive themselves as, not their true nature, you know? So um, what does it mean to be human when we're talking about when they're trying to copy uh, uh, Delos into his new android body, they're trying to get his personality right and his memories and whatever, right? But that's not real. All of those are fabricated. Essentially, they're fabricated because you never remember anything perfectly. Whenever you recall memories, they're always deteriorated a little bit. Maybe you've 
added in. I even we just yeah. now we just talked about. Oh yeah, I just added you in my memory. I was like, yeah, you remember blah blah, and I <laughs> think you were there. I was and like, it's yeah, I, I was there. So huh? <laughs> is this personality real? It's not. You know, it's just a it's just a representation that can change. It's a form of expression I'm taking on now, but I can choose to take on any expression. So um, I think to limit to say that the. I think de definitely your idea of your ego and your expression definitely is a simple code. But if we're talking about like humans and the whole metaphysical thing, what it means to be a conscious being, then that is definitely much more complex. Yeah. yeah. And um, actually, speaking of which, so there's this uh, there's this quote I sent you earlier today where I was like. Um, I was like, I actually kind of want to read this. I was like, nature is a living unity of living units in which, in each of which the power of the whole is present. So, oh yeah, I'm wearing, I'm wearing the shirt. So you always used to ask me what this means. And I don't really remember a concrete answer which I've given you. And even in the present, I haven't really given you like a concrete answer because I'm still trying to figure out what the hell this is but it's that flower of life pattern yeah it is i mean and the vesco pisces i mean there's a lot in it but i want to know how to use it um you can know what something is but um true mastery of a, a certain knowledge you know comes in applying it right like so i want to have the capacity the ability the capability to apply this towards really creating an entirely new being see for me I, I i think of it as i thought of myself i thought of my consciousness i thought of like i am data that experiences itself these these are the parts of our conversations where we always like meet at but we also like we leave with our beliefs like strengthened you know really? um like we we have a lot of similar try, uh, whatever Whatever comes in, if it can shake my beliefs to a point where I can think about it differently, I'll let it. Um, but generally, when I look at any kind of ambition, I'm like, it's a fun thing to do. It's like, <laughs> go ahead and do it. Meet the full expression of yourself. And then from there, you'll find something else to do, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, you will know, say that I It's always shame. interesting. Like, I just like learning about people's beliefs perspectives new ways of seeing things that's the fun true um i um you know i think uh that's actually something i used to embody fully when i used to go to like uh, college ex used to ask me like why what's up with you and meeting all these people right uh like why are you so interested in meeting new people and what i used to tell her was i I want to understand the universe from their perspective. I want to see what you know, what they've come to learn, the beliefs that they've like crystallized from the experiences that they've had on Earth. Uh, I definitely, I think it's uh, it's it's wise enough to learn from other people's mistakes and successes compared to thinking that I should go through all the mistakes and successes for me to know all that there is. And so, in the same way that you you are like, yeah, you know, I, I want to just like. I want to know what people believe so that I can like appreciate that. I definitely it resonates deeply with me because it's something that allows me to like stand there for like 30 minutes talking to a homeless person, really trying to understand like, my nigga, why are you homeless? You know, <laughs> you know, and 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 once I understand it, I appreciate it. Uh, it comes from a place of like not judging them, but understanding that they're simply another expression of who God is, and and for me, that's that's enriching enough to get to a point where I'm like I like that you know that's something that I, I I think that more people should kind of adopt you know in an interesting way yeah a mind is best used when it's open I mean how does that Timothy Leary quote go mind is like a parachute works best when it's open I think that's <laughs> how it goes yeah that's, but, that makes sense yeah adopting because uh, I come to a point where I kind of agree with the George Berkeley view of reality where you can't really trust anything you see with your senses and um, everything in the outside world is 
almost a reflection of what's in your head. You're always going to color it and delete it, delete information from your environment based on your own kind of biases and uh, things that you want to see and want to experience. Um, so a lot of the richness of, of the outside world is lost based on you, right? So whatever you, you hold as your belief um, or hold as facts or hold as perspectives for you, you should never fully trust it. You should always know that there's other ways, viable ways of looking and seeing the world and perceiving the world around you. And uh, so knocking other people's perspective is definitely nothing I, unless it's like not serving them. Like I could, it's, it's clear when you see someone who holds beliefs that are clearly getting in their way and I don't want any part of that. <laughs> but when I see somebody who fully believes something and it seems to bring them uh, some kind of peace and understanding and helps them navigate the world through the world in a way that is harmonious, I definitely want to see what they believe and what, uh, what this different model of, of the world is that I can possibly adopt or can possibly um, check out for a little bit at least. So, yeah, no, I did want to talk about, uh, it was really interesting, there was this um, concept uh, I got from studying all these various teachers uh, or various people who put out ideas on existentialism, transcendentalism, and uh, that all the rest of that stuff. It's really interesting how the original teacher, like say Jesus Christ uh, uh, or uh, Socrates or um, who else, a Buddha or all that stuff, they never really want to or have any expressed interest in creating organized, an organized experience, an, an organized, like a church, you know what I'm saying? Organized religion. It, it's always their disciples. It's spiritual. You know, I realized that, you know, the the spiritual journey or the spiritual awareness is always more individualistic like it's it's about you and God in a sense right and they seem to kind of mirror that kind of thought but then their disciples get a hold of it and bringing their own kind of worldly attachments to it come to the point where okay, yeah, this, this information is powerful, but how do I bring it down and have it to en enhance my power over others and like, this is what we believe and we're organized. And um, Eric Butterworth brought up a really good point in the sense like whenever a religion or some, you know, a thought movement becomes a church in a sense or becomes an organized, uh, thing it loses its ability to really transfer truth to really like be effective in in changing people's uh, in helping people in a sense because it be like people get too caught up in building churches collecting money doing all the bureaucratic non-spiritual stuff the ritual like how do we write these books to set what do we stand for yeah. our principles how are we who's the minister and who's not are you gonna <laughs> ordain, ordain women or not or you know who has our authority in this and, and it just all, becomes a machine yep. where it loses any kind of real connection with uh helping somebody connect the true nature of what it is to have a relationship with God right you know I think um, it's interesting though because there was a time in which uh, only priests could read the Bible like you know like you were supposed to go on my word of what God is uh, as you kind of hinted at the relationship with God is a personal one right yeah. you have a personal relationship like you only know of you know what he means to you what he's done to you and only you can discover that not you can't go to a congregation sit for a couple hours at a lecture and have somebody tell you this is what the nature of reality is you have to exist in reality experience what it is and you're gonna do it anyways based True. on how you interpret the words coming out of his mouth based on your experiences and based on how you 
are going to choose to accept it, you know? And it becomes super just people start it oh the way he put it was really crazy it was like there's a lot of monuments that you see in the ancient world where you look at them and you don't really know what the fuck they stood for you know what i'm saying <laughs> You're like wh who are they worshiping here what did they do what was the purpose bro i know her Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she, she works at Medtronic. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, you're saying sorry, my bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, so, you know. Like, what do they stand for? These what monuments? do they stand for? These ancient monuments, they've oh. lost all meaning, right? Mm -hmm. And you can only just guess. And that's what organized religion becomes, in a sense. Now, they. I mean, we got cathedrals. You have, yeah, you have cathedrals <laughs> and stuff, but no one really remembers what the heck they stood for. True. You know, and what, what they, it really meant. And when we talk about Christianity, especially what Christianity really meant back in the day to people. So yeah, it's just crazy um, that all these people started, uh, they just had first to, they just wanted to impart spiritual truth and like help people understand their true nature. Oh yeah. And heaven inside, the Father within, whatever. And then they're like just, people around them wanted to take it in, put power structures around it and, you know, elevate themselves and create an earthly kingdom for themselves, you know? <laughs> so, um, it sounds familiar. <laughs> it, it's interesting though. Uh,